I'm uh, Paul Couchman and I'm an historic food creator and today we're going to be making chocolate tarts from Hannah Glass's recipe from the 1780s. So we've got a lot of chocolate, we've got double cream, we've got sugar. It's not as sweet as um, you'd think a lot of chocolate tarts are, so it, it holds its bitterness which is quite good. It makes it also a bit historically um, different. You can recreate the taste as they would have been, it's not too hard. So chocolate was used um, originally as a drink, we used to drink it. And this recipe is the, one of the first ones that actually uses it as an ingredient in a tart. So it's quite special really. Um, basically it's going to be a, a base of pastry. So the pastry is made with flour, which is here, butter. Um, I'm going to put a bit of sugar and a bit of salt in it. Because I do, I do this by feel really. So you've added the butter and the flour together with a bit of salt and a bit of sugar. And you're trying to get um, sort of breadcrumbs. You can probably see now so it's sort of breadcrumb um, consistency. And then when I add the water, I really... You just add a little bit and see what happens. You pop it in and you bring it together. And if I've not put enough, I can add a bit more, but it's usually best to start with a little bit. And, and what you're trying to do is to get it to work in one ball. So it's bringing it together and using the tips of your fingers, really. But I find it really nice to do. It's one of my favorite things to do, actually, pastry. I'll line the pastry cases with that and I want to blind bake those as well. Um, inside the pastry cases when they're cooked, we're gonna make a sort of custard, um, a sort of chocolate custard really. So there's some egg here, egg and flour. Um, we've got cream, we've got custard, and um, sugar and salt again. And so that's gonna be made up into a custard, which is quite thick, put into the pastry cases, um, and then we pop them in the oven again. And that's it. Coming together, and again, if you've got it too wet at this stage, you can always add a bit more flour. And the most important thing with pastry is not to overhandle it, so not to use it too much. So once you've got it into a rough ball like that, that's probably about right. And what I do now is pop a bit of cling film over that and stick it in the fridge. So next up, we're going to make the chocolate. So what we're going to do is um, add all these ingredients together to make the chocolate sauce. And I'm going to do that in a particular way. So what I'm going to do is add up, just have a quick look here. So I've got salt, egg, um, flour and milk. I'm going to put that in a bowl here. I'm going to whisk out the lumps of that. In that pan here, I'm going to put the chocolate and the cream together. Good. I'm going to melt those down. Um, and then the chocolate um, and the cream will go into this paste here. I'll whisk that up and I'm going to move that back into the pan again, heat it up and that's the chocolate sauce. It's going to be a nice thick chocolate sauce. When you make, mix it up the pastry, it's really good to leave um, slightly bigger clumps of butter in. Because what it does, it makes the pastry really flaky. What really fascinates me about this place is we get all these things. So this is, um, the mould's been given to us by the woman across the road actually. So in Brunswick Square, number 44, Anne popped these over and said, would you like them? I said, of course, I'd love them. So we're using those today. So they've got a bit of history. 1920s, we think, from a hotel. Um, my rolling pin, I should have said earlier, again, that's um, fascinating. That comes from Tunbridge Wells. So an old chef gave this to us. Um, and she wanted things to be used. And what's great is that they were put away in the archive room um, in the early 90s. And this is the first time we've actually got them out. So now the kitchen's completed. We're getting all of this stuff out and using it properly. So it's all getting back to how it would have been used, which I kind of really like. Yeah, I really like that. It really appeals to me. Well, I'm going to put pastry into the moulds now. So the moulds, the beautiful 1920s hotel moulds, are going to be used for the, um, for the base of the chocolate tart. I'm going to pop the pastry into them. Um, and then I'll, put, I'll blind bake them afterwards.
Basically, um, they're ceramic balls, which I use to um, weigh down the pastry. I mean, you can use beans, I mean real beans, but these are handier because you can just reuse them over and over again, keep them in a jar. Weigh down the pastry, I'm gonna pop this into the oven, um, bake it for a little bit, so it's um, blind baking basically. So I've just put those in the oven. Um, they, we put ceramic beads in them, so they're gonna, it's gonna weigh down the pastry a bit. Um, 10 minutes, I reckon. Um, and then it's gonna, uh, they're gonna pop out and we're gonna put chocolate sauce in them. And then they go back in the oven again. Okay, so that's the tarts in the oven. Um, I'm gonna give them 20 minutes um, and they're gonna be fantastic. And they're gonna be even more fantastic because I've got these amazing little wild strawberries that are gonna go on top of them. So I'm gonna pop those on top and a bit of grated chocolate on top uh, again and it's gonna look amazing. So that's it for the chocolate. And now for the final finishing touch, we've got some lovely alpine strawberries, which I'm gonna scatter over. Put them on top, right, um, there's probably four. Okay. And that's it really. I've made some wonderful chocolate tarts from a recipe from Hannah Glass. Um, the, veg the original recipe is from 1785. We're cooking in an 1830s kitchen, so that's kind of, kind of nice. But the best thing about these tarts is they're there to be eaten. So I'm gonna try and find some people who want to taste a bit of 1785, really.